My name is Maximilian. I will give you a quick introduction in installing and using Basics. This is a freshly installed Windows 10. First, we will install the necessary tools and frameworks, those here shown on screen. If you have already done that, you can skip to the next segment. First, we will install the JDK. You can just click the installer through with the default values. This is the installation of the runtime environment. Again, click it through. Okay, now you can close that. Next, we'll install Git to be able to clone the repository. The Git installer has loads of options. You can just leave them all at the default values and click the installer through. Okay, don't need to see the release notes and finish. Now Tortoise Git. Tortoise Git is a graphical interface for Git. You could just use Git through the command line, but I personally prefer a GUI interface. You can leave the default settings in here as well. Don't run the first start wizard and finish. Now you should see the Tortoise Git options in your context menu. Next, we need to install Eclipse. Here in the installer, select Eclipse IDE for Java developers and click install. Accept the user agreement and wait. This might take some time. Okay, it's finished now. Click launch and wait for Eclipse to load up. Okay, now it asks where it should put the default workspace, so where your projects will be saved. By default, it just puts it in your user folder. It, that's fine, but I personally don't like it. I want to have it in, in the documents folder, like this. Then click launch and wait for it to load up. Okay, now we can go and clone the basics repository. For that, go into your explorer, into the workspace you selected, right click, click on git clone. It always does this the first time after the installation, just click OK and try again. Right click, git clone, it will then bring up this dialog. Here the URL, you have to insert the basics URL. I'll just copy it from a notepad. Here. Then click OK. And wait for it to download. That again may take some time depending on your internet connection. OK, when it's done, click close. Last, we will install Postgres. If you just want to use basics in your own projects and not make any changes to the actual basics code, you won't need Postgres because it's only required to run the basics tests. In case you don't need them, you can skip to the next section. Double click the Postgres installer. Click it through with its default values. Here when it asks you for a password, you can basically choose whatever you like. The standard password set in the basics repository to access the database is admin, lowercase. So I will use that, but you can change it in the 
basics configs later. I'll show you that. Click next. The port is right. Click it through and install it. Okay, when it's done, uncheck the stack builder and click finish. The next step is to initialize the Postgres database. For that, navigate to the basics repository, CI, SQL. There you will find the file setup underscore postgres.sql. You can hold shift and right click it and then click copy as path. That will copy the path of the file as string to your clipboard. Then you need to open a command line and enter the Postgres directory. This is necessary because Postgres does not add its binaries to the path variable of Windows. So when you're there in the bin direction of Postgres, you can type the command PSQL dash capital U Postgres dash F and then right click to paste the path you have copied. Click enter. Now it asks for a password. This is the password you set during the Postgres installation, admin in my case. Write that and click enter. If you chose a different admin password, you have to go into your basics repository again to components, basis.components, basis.components.docker, basics.components.registry, source main resources. There you will find the file sql.properties. You can open that with a text editor and you will find db pass. If you have chosen another password than admin in your Postgres installation, you have to enter it here. Otherwise, the basics test won't be able to access the database. Now we can go back into Eclipse. Close the welcome message, close the donate message. Then you can click on File, Import. From there, choose Maven, existing Maven projects. Click Next. Root directory needs to be the root directory of the basics repository. Click Select. Wait for it to look for the projects. Now it finds uh, quite a lot of projects. We don't need all of them. Best to click first on deselect all. And now we can select the ones we need, which is basics.sdk, basics.hello world, basics.examples, and everything under basics.components. Okay, if you have selected all of them, you can click finish and wait for them to import. Here you'll see the progress. You can also click this little button and you'll see the progress. It takes a while. Okay, it's finished now. First, I would strongly recommend to set Eclipse to a hierarchical representation of packages. I find it quite confusing um, with the standard settings. Just click on those three dots, package representation, hierarchical. And then it represents it as a hierarchical tree. 
Okay, now we need to set up the runtime environment so that Eclipse can find our JDK. For that, click on Window, Preferences, and in the Preferences window on Java, installed JREs. Here you'll find the standard GIE that um, Eclipse installed. You can click on Add, Standard VM, Next. JRE home is the direct, uh, home directory of our JDK. If you uh, installed it in its default path, it will be in program files, Java, JDK. Important JDK, not JRE, JDK. Click on it and select folder. Then click on finish. Here, check it and click apply. Okay, now we have to set it as our default. For that, click here on execution environments, Java SE 1.8 and check the JDK we just added. And then you can click apply and close. Okay, now we are ready to install the SDK and components. To do that, we first right click basics.sdk, run as, maven build, important, the one with the three dots behind it, not the one above. Okay, now into the, the goals edit field, enter clean install, and then you can click on run. Now it builds and installs. Just wait for that to complete. You can accept that. It's just the Windows firewall. Okay, it's done now. If it was successful, you will see this line, build success. If it encountered any problem while installing, uh, it will say build failure. Next, we have to do the same with basics.components. Again, right click it, select run as, Maven build, enter clean install. Here, if you chose to skip the Postgres installation, you can add dash d skip tests. So it won't run the tests that require the Postgres installation. I'll leave them on though. And then you can click run. Again, it installs. Okay, it's done now. And as before, you will see this line saying build success if it completed successfully. Okay, now we are done with the installation and you can start using basics. A good way to check whether everything runs now as it should is to execute the Hello World project. The Hello World project consists of two very small classes. The server class, it just starts a registry server and an AAS server, creates an administration shell and a submodel, pushes them to the AAS server and registers them. And the submodel contains a property called max temp with the value 1000 in it. Then we have the client class. The client just connects to the server, the server class generated, retrieves the submodel and prints the value of max temp to the console. First, we have to start the server class. You can do that by right clicking it, selecting run as Java application. It will start up. Again, it will have this Windows firewall dialog. Just allow it. Okay, if you see this output, it loaded up correctly. Next, the client class. We can start that like the server class. And it outputs max temp is 1000. This 1000 is the value from the submodel. So it worked. If you see this line, everything worked correctly. 
Now don't forget to stop the server again because if you leave it on it will block the ports and that might cause errors later on. The Hello World project is also a good place to start if you want to learn more on how to use basics as well as the snippets and scenarios we have in the examples project. This concludes this video. If you want more in-depth information about basics, you can visit the basics wiki. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for further videos about basics.